valvulus. Now, this cecal valvulus term is actually a misnomer. Why it is a misnomer? Because only the cecum is not rotating. In sigmoid, only the sigmoid colon was rotating. So, that was a sigmoid valvulus. Here, along with cecum, the terminal ileum is also rotating. So, ideally, it should be ileo seco valvulus or seco colic valvulus should be the correct term. But it is a misnomer. Why? Because terminal ileum and cecum both are involved. Okay. And the correct term should be ileo seco valvulus. Okay. Or ileo seco colic valvulus can be the term. Okay. Now, when compared with the sigmoid valvular, sigmoid valvulus is generally seen in old patients who are ill, hospitalized, taking opiates, neuroleptics. Here, the patients are relatively young. Okay. So, this is important. The patient is relatively of younger age group in cecal valvulus. And you see here that this is cecum colon, this is intestine. Now, this cecum is rotating here. So, it will be somewhere here the cecum and the small intestine will be somewhere here so because of that there will be obstruction which is at the level of terminal ileum or cecum so the patient will be having clinical features of small bowel obstruction there will be abdominal distension bilious vomiting inability to pass plate sdc in sigmoid valvulus as it is a closed loop obstruction there is no bilious vomiting okay In clinical features here, there will be features of small bowel obstruction. Now, what all are the predisposing factors? Any factor which is increasing the laxity of the cecum, okay, is a predisposing factor. So, if a patient is multi-para, okay, multi-para patients, they predispose to cecal valvulus any previous surgery, presence of malrotation or any distal obstruction is there. Okay, so these kind of factors they predispose to the cecal valvulus. Now, this kind of picture will be seen in cecal valvulus. We are, there is a patient with intestinal obstruction. What we are going to do? We are going to get an x-ray abdomen done. Okay, so on the basis of x-ray and CT, we can diagnose cecal valvulus. Generally, we get x-ray abdomen done. And we get a picture like this. So, this kind of picture is something like this. This is a kidney bean sign. So, a kidney bean sign is generally seen, which is suggestive of cecal valvulus. And sometimes a comma shaped side, a comma shaped cecum can also be seen. Okay shaped cecum. So, this is this picture is important. This picture is showing cecal valvulus. Which kind, which sign it is showing? It is showing a kidney bean sign. Okay. Now, what is the treatment? The treatment is resection of the terminal ileum and the cecum. So, we have to do ileocolectomy and after that, ileotransfers or ileocolic and ask. Okay, now in sigmoid valvulus, we, init we were initially derotating the valvulus and then we are going for elective surgery. Here, what is the status of this colonoscopic detorsion? It is generally not recommended. Why it is not recommended? Because there is poor outcome or like there is more failure. Okay. So, there is or increased failure rate. So, that is why we straight away go for a surgery. We resect this portion and we do ileotransfer anastomosis. No, ileocolic anastomosis. Now, this was uh, cecal valvulus. Sometimes what happens is uh, this ascending colon is fixed and this cecum is rotating anteriorly over the ascending colon. Here is cecum below. It is rotating anteriorly over the fixed ascending colon. This ileum and cecum is not rotating here like this. This 
cecum is rotating anteriorly over the fixed ascending colon this picture is intermittent and is known as cecal vascule okay so cecal vascule in which cecum folds in capillary direction anteriorly and ascending colon is fixed so what will be the clinical features intermittently there will be abdominal pain then it will be restored to its normal position so there will be intermittent abdominal pain and in then it resolves spontaneously and what is the treatment treatment is fixation of the cecum okay so this is regarding cecal vascule so the next topic